Okay. So that you can get a better idea of what I'm talking about. Know that in Ephesians 1 we parse stock, at the top of every page after page 82, is a set of links to all the verses and all the segments. These are, think of these as years. They're syllables, but think of them as years. So that you can click on any of them, okay, and see what period of history Paul's talking to in his meter. Because the words are, are satire on that period of history. It's not just the syrupy text you see in English of Ephesians 1, 3 through 14. Okay, he's making, he's making little snide remarks about the history of that time. Like for superabounds, during the time of Commodus, he was superabounding and robbing, see, superabounding and robbing the Roman Empire. Okay, and there was superabounding revenge against him. The Christians were superabounding in falsehood. Okay, so, you, you know, he has keywords that he uses, and it's like, well, what does that tell you about that time? And then you go look up who was, you know, what was going on, and you see why he's using the satire. Like, Commodus was superabounding in everything bad, and so were Christians. Okay? And that's what brings the Severus, the Severans into power. And so Peter is playing on all this future history that Paul had written out. Okay, and of course people have been taught during the ten years between Paul's writing and Peter's. So they were aware of what to expect. You know, they didn't know the details like we do, but they knew the general trend. So when you get to this this part of it, super bounds between 186 and 195 that's a time to get out of dodge because from 186 to 195 there's going to be this massive uh, nonsense of emperors one emperor after the next trying to take power which always means a lot of warring a lot of factions a lot of instability okay and so that's why Peter is benchmarking 185 to 203. Okay, it's a it's going to be such a bad period of instability. You want to take your Bible and leave the Roman Empire. That's why he's doing this. Okay, it doesn't stop there because although there is some in, interim stability once Severus gets in power, okay, and he dies in 205. There's a lot of persecution of Christians because Christians were acting like putzes. Okay, they were very nasty, you know, priding themselves in, oh, my faith is better than you, you're a pagan, I'm a Christian, and they refused military service, and they were just obnoxious. So the people were rebelling against the Christians. It wasn't so much the severance themselves, although they ended up having to pass some laws. It was the populace who was disgusted with the Christians that were around there. who were doing Montanism, Holy Roller type activity. Oh, we have secret knowledge and oracular utterance instead of reading the Bible. Kind of like the Holy Rollers do today. Okay? So, if you were a Christian, even if you weren't practicing like that, you would be tainted by the bad ones who were. So Peter's saying, hi, diaspora, that's the theme of my letter, diaspora, get out of Dodge, that will keep the temple of church building because it ain't going to happen if you're in Rome. That's what he's doing. And that's why he's reversing Paul's chronology. Paul used 28 and 63. Peter's using 63 and 28. Because during this time of the severance, a whole lot of people are going to get out of Dodge because they're going to see they don't want to be around other Christians who are apostate. And they don't want to be around the Romans who are going to blame them for being like the apostate Christians. So they get out of Dodge. They get out of Rome. Okay, that's the message that Peter's sending with his meter. Okay, the second, then there's a sort of a lull between 203 and 213. And the reason why is that Caracalla comes to power. Okay, actually it's toward the, toward the tail end 
of Severin because he's, he brought some stability to Rome with his laws. His son Caracalla, however, was a real jerk. And Severus dies in 2011. Okay, so by the time Caracalla comes to power, he's almost immediately a bad guy. And his own people are going to try to murder him by 215. So Peter's truncating it. Paul's using 215 because he's following Roman, em Roman emperors themselves. Peter's, you know, uh, what do you want to call it? sort of moderating the timeline because he's tracking good times for diaspora. So a couple of years before, see, because Caracalla is going to be the, the object of conspiracy in 215, which means Rome will be in an uproar. Peter says, look, between 213 and 231, you want to get out of Dodge. Okay? Ideally, you do it at the earlier end, not at the later end. This is sort of analogous to what Daniel 12 had done trying to tell you about the exit window in mid-trib. I've already covered that in my Daniel videos, so if you're not aware of it, then you'll have to watch those videos um, in my Daniel 9 playlist, which is Yapping Most High and Psalm 90 playlist. I split it between the two. Okay, so get out of Dodge, and then that's going to lead to look at this. Everybody and his brother wants to be an emperor. You got Macrinus, Diomenus. See, these are links to outside university sources so you can look up who these people were. Heliogobulus, who was one of the sons of the Julius sisters. The Julius sisters were married to the Severans. It's unbelievable all the games that were being played here. Okay, so in 231, that was the persecution I mentioned in the last increment. Okay, so Peter's saying, get out by 231. Because it's going to be almost too late and too hard if you don't. Okay? And if you look at those syllables in Paul, which again are at the top of every page, starting on page 82, if you look at those syllables in Paul that Peter's tracking, you can get links to external sites that tell you what the history was like during those years. Okay? So you can understand better what Peter's talking about. Peter's talking prophetically, but God knew all this in advance. So we have to look at it retrospectively to know what the prophecy was referring to. Okay? And ideally, you know, people were taught, get out of Rome, stay away from Rome during that time. Okay? Just stay away. And they would use this like a calendar. That's how Psalm 90 works. That's how Daniel 9, Isaiah 53 worked. That's how Daniel 9 worked. That's how, you know, the Magnificat worked. Paul and now Peter. They're all giving you a little calendar, and then the text is telling you something about those years that you should be thinking in order to get through the time. Because it'll be hard. Okay, it's hard when you're on the run. And that's basically what Peter's giving them, is a calendar of when they ought to run. That's diaspora. Okay? So... We've, we've finished in the last increment here at 231, but I wanted you to see that, you know, in Paul, you can actually look up the history, because I've already put in the links. Here's the Bishop List book I was talking about in the last increment, okay? And I did videos on it, but you can just buy it yourself at Amazon. It's one of the best books I've ever read, okay? And yes, it's $99, and yes, it's expensive, and yes, it's worth it. Okay, but some most of these links are just free stuff. Okay, I'm telling you who these people were. Okay, so by the time we get to 231, we've already had you know musical chairs with the emperors. Finally, the Severans get back in power by claiming incest between Caracalla and one of their other kids. Okay, and that's how Heliogabalus was one of those other kids. And then the third one was Severus Alexander, okay? Now, he sort of stabilized the time between 222 and 231. But Peter's saying still get out of Dodge, because this is when the Catholics rise. This is when Catholicism is actually born as a movement, not as an institution. It's born as an institution under Constantine. It's born as a movement in Rome due to different factions of Christians fighting each other. It's born as a movement in Rome during this time. 
really started about here. Paul benchmarks it start here. And Stephen Williams' book on Bishop Lists gives you the actual rundown of the timeline. He doesn't know the meter. Nobody knows the meter. I'm the only one who knows the meter. I'm sorry. So all this is original research and it's going to take a long time to vet if you're even supposed to do that. Okay? So 231 is Peter's benchmark for the last minute get out of Dodge. Okay? And Paul had benchmarked it also. And then the last seven years Paul had benchmarked as a tribulational life period, a period of great persecution. And it really was. I mean, that was when the, the Catholics were rounded up because they were so politically active and the other factions at Rome got sick of them. The pagan factions at Rome. So it was a real good idea to get out of Dodge by 231. If you didn't, well, you were under persecution from 231 to 238. Okay, Peter has already warned you here, 231. So now when is your next exit window? Okay, you've got a sort of hiatus between 231 and 241. Your next exit window is somewhere between 241 and 259. So you can look up here on the syllables that cover Paul's meter, okay, which is 238 to 252, okay? And like I said, you can, it's not always on every page. You can just go to the actual part of it, okay? So like here, you want to go to 252 to cover the period from 241 to 259. So you go 238 to 252, click on that link, and here you are, and this tells you what was going wrong. We had round robin with the emperors again, Gordianus, Philip the Arab. Then you have the Decius persecution, which wasn't as bad, wasn't as, bad as the church fathers try to tell you, but it was bad. And so you just don't want to be in town. So just get out from 241 forward, just get out, okay? And that basically means that before Gordianus would become emperor, as he was a kid then, get out, okay? He's killed in 244. So that would be a real obvious time to get out. If you didn't do it already in 241, you'll be reminded in 244 when he gets killed, because that's when there's always a period of instability in Rome. So just stay clear during that entire time. Now, in Paul, when he handles this part, when he's handling this part, Paul sets this apart from the 91. He ended his 91 here, okay, at 238 rather than Peter's 231. And he's sick. this is like an Anna Kalutin. It's, it's saying it's such a pregnant time in history, it's separate from all the rest. And, of course, the text fits that. The summing up, the filling up. He's saying the role of church is to fill up time. Okay? Dispensationalism, of course, is a modern term. But it's close enough because he's saying the times. We call them dispensations. Segments of time over which a certain contract applies. Okay. Divine contract. Okay, so Paul is saying this period is pivotal to all history when he sets it apart from the 91s. Okay, Peter knows that. But Peter is, is kind of like adding to it because his theme is get out of Dodge. His theme is diaspora. So instead of it just being 14, he takes... The seven years here, after 231, adds them to the 14 here, and then this period here is when Gallienus gets control of the West, and Emperor Gallienus, and there's a certain stability in the West as a result. So until 260, okay, you want to be running to the West. This is basically a direction, because Paul sort of alerted you to that. The Decian persecution starts in here at the end. Okay, Decian persecution starts there. And then Gallienus splits off from his dad, because his dad goes to fight wars and other things. Gallienus is friendly to Christians. 
So this is not merely telling you to get out of Dodge. It's telling you to go to Gallienus as part of Rome. Western, Germanic, Germania, Britannia, that part. Rome split in two at this time. This is called, and historians call this, the crisis of the third century. They date it usually starting in 235, because this is when Severus Alexander was killed. And then they go all the way up until the time of Diocletian. So that's what Peter's benchmarking here. Go to the west, go to where Gallienus' kingdom is, because Rome splits. That's a good exit window. And then it's overlapping with 255 to 273. And the reason that matters, the reason that matters, as we'll see here, um, oh, I'm sorry. The reason that matters is in 259, I'm sorry this is so slow. Okay, in 259, this is when Gallienus gets the West, see? He gets Gallienus ratified as Caesar. Gallienus gets the West. He's really nice to Christians, okay? There are lots of plagues going on in Rome, see? In other words, why Peter's telling you to get out of Dodge. Okay, lots of plagues. Gallienus gets to innovate, and he operates on interior lines because he's having trouble defending his kingdom. And he finally lets Gaul go. Well, if he lets Gaul go, okay, by 267, then that's going to be an opportunity to go there and live as a Christian. Because obviously Gallienus is under fire. So you don't want to be in his territory at that time. Okay? So another time of moving around. See, so you move to Gallienus' territory by here. Because he ends up getting the west. But he can't hold on to it. So now somewhere around 255 to 273, you want to get out of Dodge again. Get away from even his territory. Either go to Britain or go to Parthia in the far east. Okay. Because Zenobia is going to be taking over. But Zenobia was in um, what was called Petra in those days. Okay. So you could, you could, you know, that's Palmyra. You could get um, some freedom to study scripture, freedom away from the so-called Catholics who are just getting started, if you went during these windows into diaspora. That's what Peter's trying to explain. Go into diaspora during this time. Go into diaspora during this time. That's the west. This will end up being the east or farther west. Take your pick. Okay, that's what he's plotting here. And then it's like the exit window closes. Nobody can get out of Dodge. Okay? And this is the period when our boy, um, you have lots of, you know, emperors again, you know, musical chairs. Okay? Aurelian, Quintilus, Aurelian. Okay? And he manages to win over Zenobia, so then you're going to have to exit from there by 273. See, he's giving you a window. By 273, you go. Because Aurelian is going to come take over Zenobia's territory, therefore it becomes Roman. Therefore, your window is going to close. Okay? And then also Tetricus in the west by 274. So you're, you're moving farther and farther away from the, the center, the hinterland of the Roman Empire. You're moving into the hinterland. You're moving away from Rome because Rome is expanding to try and take back its old territory. Okay? And so you're moving everywhere under the heavens but Rome. See? Isn't that clever? False. And, and then Peter's saying that will be to the praise of God to do this. Okay? To the praise of God at the revealing of Jesus Christ to do this. Okay, he's warning you that this is important. See, fire, okay, being proven by fire, you will be found. Yeah, if you leave. See, and it's a fiery ordeal to have to get up and move. Okay, that's a pain in the neck. All right, and so this is your exit window and why. And 14 sort of reinforces the fact of what he's saying about fire here. Double, double trouble, boiling bubble, okay? Now... 
if you didn't get out by 273, it's going to be really hard to get out because, see, 272, 274, the, the east and the west have been taken back over by Rome. But there's always, you know, everything with God has its, you know, opportunities. But they aren't going to be too good, okay? you got Tacitus being acclaimed emperor, then Probus, now Carus, and through Carus comes Diocletian. And Diocletian wants to comes to power by his own accounting in 283, okay? But he's underneath Carus, okay, by 282. He's underneath Carus, okay? That's a, he was a usurper, okay? So really, you know, if you haven't made it by 273, your pickings are going to be slim, and you're going to be in for a period of true persecution because that's what happens under Diocletian. Diocletian comes to power in 283. He possibly murdered Carus and Numerian and Corinus. It's not real clear if he did it or he's just opportunistic and taking advantage. But he gets acclaimed he gets acclaimed emperor. 283, 284. 283 by his own accounting. 284 by history. So you'll notice that this is all blue now. Okay, it's all blue. This is divisible by three, which is kind of cute, but it's all blue. All right, our boy Constantine, who is going to wreck everything, our boy Constantine comes into power during this time. Okay, so you want to get out of Dodge because you're going to be persecuted under the pagans, and you want to get out of Dodge because what's going to happen is the Catholic Church will become an institution under Constantine during this window is when it really, you know, comes to fruition. So the reason why this, this is not divisible by seven is to warn you that it's not going to be a good time to get out at 273. If you can't get out by then, okay, try and you're going to be persecuted. Almost all Bibles that were in the Roman Empire get destroyed during this time. First they get destroyed by Diocletian and his pals and then they get destroyed by the Christians Jewish persecution begins in earnest here too it's a really bad time in history okay that's why Paul you know treats Constantine with such disdain in his meter using Constantine's death in 337 as pro -ed. so <coughs> getting out of Dodge especially between 332 and 350 will result in the completion of the second 490 of diaspora, which is what Peter's playing on. The temple 490 that is analogous to the temple in Daniel 9, also plays for church. The same doctrine applies to church because it's church, because it's, you know, the bridge back to time for Israel while church lasts. And so how does it get done? Well, make sure that you're out of Dodge, for sure, between 332 and 350. Because after that, it's going to be too late. And it really is too late because by Constantine dies in 337. His sons war with each other over whether God is one or three. And all the sons kill each other. There is no fourth generation, and I'm not even sure you can say that there's a third generation. So you don't want to be anywhere near Rome. Definitely by this point. Okay? And I cover this in more detail, much more detail in, you know, the Ephesians 1 reparse with lots of documentation to lots of different links about the guys who were in power and the issues and how they fought over each other, etc. I mean, this is a very long section, okay? See, it's taking me this long just to get to 301. So if you want to look at the history, then just, you know, click on the, the history links in Ephesians 1 for the years that you see um, Peter referencing. And that way you can get a better sense of things. Okay, now Peter does a really weird thing that I can't wholly account for. So I'm just going to summarize it. Um, at 350, that was the last exit window. Then it's as if, yeah, everybody who could exit does. That's my guess as to what he's doing here. Because he deliberately pads syllables here 
to get to an 18 syllable count. He could have said the same thing in different words with a different syllable count. Okay? So, instead of doing that, he, he makes sure that the 350 here in Paul's meter, he now is coming full circle. That's what Daniel also did. He's coming full circle to his own time which is still future of his time, but now you've got a convergence between the mapping to Paul, which started out, you know, 84 years ahead, and now there's only the 18 for the 18 prior years of temple building that, you know, when Herod started. So now we balance, okay? And so since we balance, he's now going to do his next seven based on the interior lines. So it sounds like he's saying everybody that was going to get out of Dodge did and anybody who stayed behind doesn't grow. Because from this point forward in the meter here, there are no more orange. There's no more divisible by 7. And it goes all the way down to 501, which is divisible by 3, but not by 7. So, and Paul was basically saying that after 434 in his meter, I'll show you. After 434 in his meter, that nobody's going to mature anymore. See, this is a 91 all by itself. It's the fourth quarter of church, a.k.a. the winter of church. It ends at syllable 434 with the 56 to count to 490 in advance. And he started it right here and he ends Constantine's life ends right there okay so he's basically that's snubbing Constantine saying that he didn't mature because this means first fruits okay Constantine wasn't one of them okay I'm sure he was saved or I'm reasonably sure he was saved but he wasn't mature okay so the whole last from 343 onward and Peter's picking this up five years, seven years later, okay? So he's lumping seven years of this into his own exit, get out of Dodge period, okay? See, this is 352 in Paul, starting a new paragraph, okay? There. That's where Peter's ending. So Peter's saying, get out of Dodge by 350, Okay, so he lumps that with his second quarter, or third quarter rather. In other words, Paul's third quarter ends at 343, Peter's ends at 350, because he's tracking to diaspora. All right, then all of a sudden he's beginning again at 350, all right, on interior lines, and then cutting it at 434 like Paul does at the end of Ephesians. So he's telling you he's still tracking to Paul. So all the words that are here in Paul for this period are words that Peter means you to understand and the characteristics of history during that period that the words are describing, one syllable per year. Okay? And 434 is a very dangerous time in Rome, really bad time to be there because the, the apostasy of the Catholicism is really, really, really bad at that point. But it started in 350 with the Warring Sons. So Peter is basically saying, if you don't get out by 350, your chances of being able to get out are pretty slow until 434. So he's saying that you end up getting trapped. Okay, you end up getting trapped in the Rome if you haven't gotten out by then. Okay. And Paul basically stops there because there's no point in going further. He's already told you the breath, you know, the trend of the rest of history is right here. Almost nobody's gonna grow. Okay, nobody's gonna grow. No more little sevens within seven. See, we had a little seven in here, a 49, a little seven. That means there was growth spurts. And after that, no growth spurts. The Holy Spirit will still accomplish his job, but it's gonna be on little people, you know, little tufts of people, little, little handle, you know, handfuls of grain, believers being a crop, okay? So Peter's saying your exit window 350, 
It's going to be really hard to get out between 350 and 4, 434. So get out here. And if you do, and he's saying enough people will, that this ends up accomplishing God's goal by what is the 69th week in Daniel. See, it was 7 weeks and 62 weeks. This 434 is a play on 62 weeks, which is second in the verse. So that Daniel 9.26 gets met, which means church can bridge back to. All right, and to underscore that, then he does a little postscript here. Because, see, this is Paul's fourth quarter. And Paul has stopped at 434. So there's a sort of little postscript here by our boy who is using 49 and he's summing up now the whole idea of the 69 weeks because see there's a new 490 granted to the temple the church is a temple of the body of Christ so the temple is being built and he's leaving that extra seven in abeyance because first of all the temple that he he's talking to in Jerusalem isn't down yet so he's making an adjustment for it going down by leaving the seven years out but he's also making a sort of cliffhanger you know like every every sitcom or other dramatic series on TV they end the season with a cliffhanger well that's what he's doing here so it's literal it's real these words apply the time that he's talking about and that's a very sophisticated thing to understand which I haven't covered yet but at the same time he's basically sh showing you how God's will is going to be met the 69 weeks are going to play out for church just like they played out for Israel so the church can be a bridge back to time for Israel so the pre-trib rapture will occur on time uh, but there's no time predicted now of course because it's based on the bodies being completed he's saying the bodies will be completed the pre-trib rapture will occur as it ought to the Israel's time will be restored and then you know the promise that was made in Psalm 90 verses 1 through 4 which was 84 syllables which is how Peter began verse 1 of 1 Peter 1 that it's all gonna happen as you know promised okay that's basically why it's closing at 483 instead of 490 it's a cliffhanger it can go wrong but it won't okay so that's why Peter uses this postscript going past Paul to fill in what Paul didn't say okay well, that's basically it there's more to say on it but this is all I'm gonna say for now peace out